This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. So I have this simple application. It's currently hosted on Heroku. And if we go to Heroku, you'll see that starting November 28th, free Heroku Dinos, and the Postgres SQL and Redis will no longer be available. So you are able to upgrade your plan in the dynos in order to keep your application up and running. And for some people, that might be the best option because you don't want to take over the infrastructure side of things and you simply just want your application up there. But for others, they may find that moving to a different infrastructure is the right choice. In the past, I have covered using Render. However, in this episode, I want to use Fly.io to deploy the application. And so what we're going to look at doing is migrating our application from Heroku with this DR example application. And if we open the app, we do have one record on here created on Heroku. And we want to migrate this entire application over to Fly.io, including the database. And I'm not going to be covering the active storage side of things because we should already be using something like Wasabi S3, Backblaze, or something else. But getting our application launched over on Fly.io and getting our database migrated from Heroku could be a task in itself. So that's what we're going to focus on in this episode. Once we sign up for an account on Fly.io, we do need to install the command line utility with a brute install Fly Control. And once we do that, we can run the fly control auth and login to authenticate our account. And once authenticated, we can run the fly launch. And this will go through a series of questions. It'll ask us for the application name. I'm just going to give it the DR example. And then it asks us where do we want to deploy it. So make sure you select the desired data center. And then it asks if we want to set up a Postgres database. I'll go ahead and hit yes. And because this is just an example application, I'm just going to specify the development database. And then it'll go through a process of spinning up the database and getting everything set up. But it hasn't deployed the application yet. That'll come at a later time. While it is spinning up the services, I do want to note that there is a great guide for migrating from Heroku on the fly.io docs. And it covers just about everything you need to know about that migration. So if you do run into some issues, I would recommend coming in here and having a look at the docs, just in case if there's anything a little bit different that might be for your application. And I will post a link to this in the show notes. And once that's done, it also notices that we may need a Redis database. So we're going to go ahead and set that up as well. And again, because this is a sample application, I will pick the free 100 megabyte max data size. And so before we deploy, Let's have a look at any of the files that change. It looks like we got a fly.toml, and this is all of the different configurations for the infrastructure on the fly.io side. We also have a Docker file, and there's quite a bit going on into this Docker file. And I do like that they give us access to this Docker file because otherwise, if we did run into some problems or if we had some very specific use cases, maybe we needed FFmpeg or something else installed then we wouldn't be able to do it in a traditional sense. It would have to be something that is done on the Heroku CLI or similar. And then we also got a fly.rate task, which has some nice little helper scripts. And once all of this is done, we can then run the fly deploy to deploy our application to fly. Now, keep in mind that we did already provision a database and we are now deploying our application to fly.io. However, it's not going to have any of our existing data in there from Heroku. We are going to have to do that at a different step. And another thing that we're not going to cover in this is when we do do the migration, you will need to update your DNS records with the CNAME record. This is going to have a bit of downtime for your application. So you do want to make sure that you're notifying your customers and you have a maintenance windows 
and it looks like we ran into an error where the application didn't pick up that we had a yarn application because I am using JS bundling with ES build. So this is something that we are going to have to resolve before we're able to build our application. And so if we come under the Docker file, around line 43, I'm gonna copy and paste in the Volta, which allows us to then install Node and Yarn. We can specify the Node version and the Yarn version up at the top. And so I'll just insert in those there, and then we should be good. So we can try running the fly deploy again, and now we can see that it's installing Node and Yarn. And so now we're back at the bin rails, fly build, and it looks like it got past that yarn error. And now it's done and it's pushing up to fly.io's registry. And depending on your internet speed, this could take a bit, but once everything is pushed, it's then going to do the release. And if we scroll up a bit, because it went by pretty fast, it does look like it ran the rake task fly release, which does do the DB migrate. And so it ran all the migrations for us, which is great for a normal application. However, we do have a problem here because we are going to want to restore our Heroku database onto here, so we will need to wipe this database. And after a bit, we got a successful deployment. We can come back to our dashboard, I'll refresh the page, and then we see we have our DR example application. We have our host name, so if you do have a CNAME record, this is what you would want to point it to. We can click on it, and our application is up and running. We can create a test post, and it looks like it's working. So if you do do the migration, I would recommend getting all the way up to this point before you do anything like take down your website, and even just make sure you've ironed out all the kinks. I would also just go ahead and deploy this as a staging environment or something similar just to make sure that you have all your dependencies and everything that you need. Test out the application and make sure that everything is working correctly. Then you can host that environment if you wanted to do the actual deployment. Do the deployment, get everything the way it needs to be up to this point. And then we can look at migrating the database from Heroku over into fly.io. And when you're doing the testing, make sure you test all the aspects of the application, especially the critical happy paths. So if you are using background jobs, make sure that you're testing that as well and that you're getting a connection to your Redis database. And some handy commands, you can use fly logs and that's going to show you all the logs from your application and it will tail them. You can hit the control C to exit out of there. And if you need to SSH into there for whatever reason, you can do a fly SSH console dash C with a forward slash app bin Rails console. Now I'm in the Rails console, so I can do a post.count and we see that we have our one post. So let's say we've done all of the testing up to this point and we're ready to do the migration. Depending on your database size, this could take a long time, so you do want to plan for that. And really, what I would probably do is do a test run, which you can do while the database is live, so that way you know how long it's going to take. And I think this process is really going to be most ideal on the smaller databases. If your database is terabytes in size, then this is just gonna be a nightmare of a process, and chances are you might lose some packets along the way, or you could get an interrupted connection. So for those certain situations, I would probably contact fly.io to see their recommendations, as those are gonna be the one-off cases. And so right now, I am on my development machine, so I do have access to the Heroku CLI because my application is currently hosted there. So I could do a config dash S to see all of the secrets that I have stored over in Heroku. And the most important one here is our database URL because that's where our database is stored. And if I do a fly secrets list, then this is gonna show me all the secrets within fly. However, this is really just showing me that they do exist. So what we need to do is with the fly secrets, we need to set the Heroku database URL. And we're gonna set this equal to a command, and that's gonna be the Heroku config, and we want to get the database URL. So basically, that's going to run the Heroku config get command, it'll get this database URL, and then it's gonna set it within fly to the Heroku database URL. It is gonna to have to do a redeployment, 
just so the applications have access to that environment variable. And that's going to be important because we're going to shell into our console of the running container. And from there, we're then going to do a PG dump from our Heroku database URL over into fly.io's database. And so right now, I'm just testing to make sure that we are getting this working. If we were doing this for real for the final migration, we would then call the Heroku maintenance and we would pass the on flag for the app in the name of our app, which is DR example. So by doing this, we've enabled maintenance mode, which means if we go to our application and try to open the app, then you'll see that it's offline for maintenance. And this is very important because that means no more database writes are going to be hitting our Heroku database. That means that whenever we do the migration of the database over to fly.io, then we are getting all of the latest data. There is no sync that we can set up between the two. However, if you are just doing this for testing to make sure that everything's going to work, you don't need to set the maintenance mode. So I'll turn that off for now, and then we'll run the fly SSH console. And this will take us into the shell of one of our running containers. And I'll paste this out, but to explain what this is doing, we're doing a PG dump from the Heroku database. We're then doing a PG restore to our fly.io database. So we can run this and we immediately get an error and this is very annoying because we are getting a version mismatch on our PG dump. So in order to do this, we are gonna have to fix it. And unfortunately, we don't have the LSB release. So all the documentation that's available for this doesn't work. But if we do cat out the file, Etsy issue, you see that we are running Debian and we're on version 11, which is the bullseye. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install the PostgreSQL version 14 on this box. So we're able to then communicate with the database and do the restore. So it is the PG dump that is airing out. So the server version is 14, but the PG dump version on Debian 11 is version 13. So we are just going to get the sources for Bullseye from the PostgreSQL, and then we're going to get the GPG keys. We can then run apt update, and then we can run the apt install PostgreSQL-14, and we'll just confirm that. And once that's done, we can then rerun the PG dump, and now you can see that it succeeded. The PG dump downloaded the database from the Heroku database URL, and then we did a PG restore, which then restored that database, over into our fly.io. So if we come back to fly.io's website, we can then come back to our host name, which will open our application. And now we see the created on Heroku. So that worked. We downloaded our database and now it's over here. If on the Heroku side, I'll refresh to restart the application, we can create a second post that was created successfully. We see the second post, but on the fly.io side, if we refresh, we still just have the one post there is no sync going on between the two. However, if we are ready to do our migration, we can put our application in maintenance mode on Heroku. And once it's in maintenance mode, we can then do the fly SSH console. Because I haven't done any more deployments, I should still have the PostgreSQL version 14 on here. So I should just be able to do the PG dump and PG restore. And that worked. We can then come back the Heroku app is offline for maintenance. And then before I do any switching in the DNS, I would then verify and do a quick sanity test that the fly.io's website is up and running. So now that we verify that we have all of our data, it's working as we expected, and we're able to persist data to our database. Now we can look at cutting over the DNS. The nice thing is you'll know that it's working once your application quits showing the offline for maintenance and it's showing the actual application again, then you know the cutover is complete. DNS propagation can take a while, so don't think that there's an error on your end if everything is set up correctly and you're able to access it on the fly.io's website. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.